Welcome to another monumental Monday, you marvelous maniacs. It's the start of our first Halloween week-long extravaganza. As you can see, I am in costume. I came tonight as Jesse Waters. You can tell I'm him from the tweezed eyebrows and inflated self-esteem. It's so convincing that on my way to work, I was pelted with wet garbage. And that was from his mother. <laughs> but before we get to the news, it's time for a very special Halloween episode of our favorite news sitcom. Tonight's episode, Inhuman Resources. Well, I'm sure you're aware of all the horrific things that have been happening around the Gutfeld offices. And we, in human resources, we cannot tolerate death and dismemberment in the workplace. What does this have to do with me, dude? You're wasting my time. I got two hit shows. Well, What's the okay. deal here? Let me refresh your memory. Oh, my God. What's wrong? Oh, my God. You all right? Nothing. I, I just, I don't know. I'm seeing things. Yeah, you've been working really hard. Yeah. Thirsty. You probably need something to drink. <laughs> Maybe you're dehydrated. Oh my God. <laughs> <coughs> 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 we did that on a limited budget. <laughs> I can't believe Schwimmer did not take that role. <laughs> All right, to the news. On Thursday, actor and gun control activist Alec Baldwin accidentally killed a cinematographer on the set of the Western he was filming in New Mexico. As the news dribbles out, we see many things that went wrong. Now we hear that the gun actually had been used for target practice by the so-called expert. Yikes. And it may have had live ammo in it. Double yikes and that it was pointed at a person, triple yikes. That's a huge no-no and one of the most basic tenets of gun safety. You don't have to be an NRA member to know that. The firearm also wasn't checked each step of the way from handoff to handoff. All of these tragic errors are based on carelessness, inexperience, and lack of safety protocols. They might as well put Hunter Biden in charge of the medicine cabinet. Now, it could be they were in a hurry to save money. It could be they were cutting corners. Either way, it was a highly preventable screw-up. Having an expert on gun safety would have changed that. It seems, at least to me, that's what was lacking. But where do those experts come from? I would say the NRA. But you might as well say IRA if you're telling that to Hollywood gun control activists. They'd rather take gun training from Charlie Sheen in a hot tub full of mayonnaise. <laughs> So fat chance anyone from the NRA would be invited to a movie set where Baldwin was the producer. Cat would have a better chance guest hosting special report. <laughs> One day. And so we find another instance where the prison of two ideas creates problems. If there was an NRA person on set, this would never have happened. But no one in charge would do that because in the prison of two ideas, gun control good, NRA evil. And that dictates that you're either a gun control activist like Baldwin or you're an evil gun owner like me. And that excludes real expertise. If the two prison idea didn't exist, the set would have benefited from the NRA's hardcore focus on safety and it would have saved a life. It's like a homophobe not asking his gay neighbor who's an interior designer to help him decorate his apartment. <laughs> In the long run, he's only hurting himself. Instead of getting laid all the time, girls are going to take one look at his neon Budweiser sign and shag rug and say, sorry, guy, enjoy your hand. <laughs> we still don't know what truly happened, but it's becoming clearer and clearer. Perhaps the people who work in the world of make-believe want nothing to do with reality's true experts. Anti-gun advocates hate gun advocates because of a projection of their own insecurities. It's not that they don't trust gun people with guns, it's that they don't trust themselves with guns, therefore it should not exist at all. 
Last week, we talked about a segregated dorm of women and trans people who were upset when cis-normative, i.e. straight, repairmen came to install new radiators for their rooms to anticipate an Ohio winter. You think there's nothing worse than a male or female freezing their balls off? <laughs> but no, it's straight men trying to help you stay warm. The dormies didn't want their world infringed by another different world. They felt unsafe with a straight man in their midst. What would they have preferred? Do the work themselves? You see, that's like handling a gun on a set with no expert. You see, it's all the same, that if you segregate your world based on ideas or identities, you lose out on the experience, the wisdom, and the expertise of the very groups that you're avoiding. Here's a chart. The first one shows the prison of two ideas. You see, there is no information sharing. The second one shows them overlapping. That's how wisdom and know-how spreads. It's pretty simple stuff. I came up with that chart myself. <laughs> But this simple phenomenon is now being prevented as a consequence of the elitist thirst for separation and conflict. And it's happening everywhere, from campus housing to Hollywood. There are millions of amazing people who know how to deliver cargo, repair trucks, build bridges, and handle guns. But what if they're straight, or Trump supporters, or religious, or meat eaters, or they put pineapple on their pizza? <laughs> Ugh, stop it, Emily. Love it. It's the baby in the bathwater. You divorce yourself from different people and you divorce yourself from their invaluable assistance and you end up clueless and stupid, meaning a college student. <laughs> Just the way the professional sports world benefited from desegregating, the set of Baldwin's movie could have benefited from an NRA's member's experience and knowledge. I'm sure the NRA would have gladly volunteered an expert to oversee safety protocols. You probably could have found a liberal one too, but no one thought of that. Because NRA bad, gun control good. It's unfortunate a tragedy like this had to happen before maybe somebody on a movie set says, sure, he voted for Trump, but he can clean his AR-15 blindfolded. But I prefer to live in a world where people know how to control the guns they have rather than people having guns and have no control at all. Hiring a gun lover would have threatened their safe space, but without them, it became a deadly one. So maybe if you're gonna film using real guns, Reconsider your anti-gun ideology. Allow real experts to be involved so you can expertly shoot movies and not colleagues. Ladies, welcome tonight. Yes. If she were a salad dressing, it would be dreamy Italian. Outnumbered co-host Emily Cavagno. He wears red berets and rescues feline strays. New York City Republican mayoral candidate Curtis Sliwa. <laughs> this Halloween, we asked her to egg her because she needs the protein. Fox News contributor Cat Tip. <laughs> and a small step for Tyrus is one giant leap for mankind. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Television Champion, Tyrus. <laughs> Tyrus, I go to you first because you are on a lot of movie sets. Yes, some with permission, some without. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I'm just kidding. You know, uh, you make a lot of great points in your, on your monologue, but it's actually lower than that. Yeah. This is about elitism and greed, mm -hmm. which ended in a result of, of an unfortunate death. The working conditions for the crew were so poor mm -hmm. that they walked off set. Mm -hmm. Which means, and that goes to, and I've been on some, we'll call them B movies, okay? Whether that's <laughs> small budget or whatever. But usually the guys on small budget movies work their ass off because right. they want to be big budget movies one day. Mm -hmm. And everything with guns and stunts is all about procedure, routine, repetition. It's every time I was in a scene with a gun, one take, hand it back. He checks it when he hands it back. He puts it on the table. Then they check it again. It comes back. Then he yells to the group, cold or hot, letting you know what, what the situation with the gun is. When you get to the point, and this is Alec Baldwin. Where I'm assuming he's successful. Mm -hmm. He's <laughs> producing this movie. <laughs> he's got people giving him loans and investing, and you're starving out and having the people that you rely on Behind the scenes, the stunt workers, the coordinators, the seconds, the thirds, the guys you never see except a little bit on, if you stay on the credit looking for an extra part of a movie, 
He didn't want to pay them or give them a decent place to sleep at night. And they were doing this old trick where they'd ask him to take a two-hour lunch so they could work a 15-hour day, which is against all the SAG rules. So lo and behold, he then they walk off. Right. And what does the liberal elitist do? I'll replace them with locals. <laughs> non-union. Now, non-union guys, which that's not a fair shot at them. But yep. when you cross over, even if on the best situation, if they told me right now, hey, Tyrus, not working out, Shalou's going to take over from right here in my earpiece. And as Shalou walks in, he goes, what were you saying? I'm going to say yourself <laughs> and walk out. <laughs> Curtis, what do you make of this? What a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's, what they, that's how they describe me. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, now, I know Alec Baldwin. I've yeah. had a great relationship with Alec and all of his brothers through all the years because, yeah. you know, they're local. Yeah. Long Island guys, they've all succeeded in different capacities. Some of them. That's true. Billy, not so much. Look, I mean, ups, downs <laughs> all around, all right? <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Having been shot with a gun five yeah. times, mm -hmm. 38 special, every time I see a gun, it's got to be check, check, double check. Mm -hmm. Because it brings back nightmares to me. I was fortunate enough to survive a hitman, you know, from the Gambinos and the Gattis. Mm -hmm. But that, that one piece that you're holding in your hand can do so much damage. Mm -hmm. And you would think there would be someone on the set, right. NRA trained, certified, yep. what do they call that, the Eagle Scouting, uh, I think, uh, uh, gun seminar that they give, mm -hmm. and just have them check, check, double check, triple check, quadruple check, because that kills. Mm -hmm. That maims. Yeah. But there's no thought process to that. No, especially, I think, to Tyrus's point about the cost cutting, that takes over, and then all this, all these protocols go away, Emily. You're our legal eagle. Usually you say, I don't believe that you're an attorney. This is an improvement. I feel like I've been promoted. <laughs> I am an attorney. Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never mind. <laughs> no, what, uh, what, uh, where do you see this going legally, young lady? Well, to respond to your monologue, a gun safety group came out and said exactly that. They said, the teachable moment here is that when a Hollywood actor lectures you about gun control, they don't have a clue what they're talking about because safety is no accident. Mm -hmm. And that goes exactly into what you're saying in the protocols. Uh, legally, I think we see an unfortunate trend here that on this particular set, there was concern after concern raised that the assistant director, Dave Halls, was ignoring all of that protocol and procedure in addition to the egregious situation that was happening with all the other stuff. But specifically in the realm of firearms and pyrotechnics, there were, there were complaints that were made and also on prior sets. So this guy has a history of ignoring safety protocols that other people around him have raised, but the pyrotechnic uh, technician and prop masters have raised. And to your point, it might just land in the civil bucket. Mm -hmm. But in 2012, a woman named Sarah Jones, who was a camera assistant, was killed by a freight train in a stunt in New York State. And the assistant director was put on probation for 10 years, but the director was criminally charged with involuntary manslaughter, and he served a year in prison. Oh, wow. And the way that I see this coming out, you know, no, with, no, with all homage to Halloween, is that heads are going to roll. Mm. Interesting. Kat, you're familiar with firearms. Yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> um, is it kind of hypocritical for anti-gun actors to be shooting guns in movies in the first place? Because, it re because they treat them as make-believe as opposed to as respecting the weapon. Like, I always go to the point where the, when they're firing a gun sideways, which yeah. nobody does. Oh. Yeah, well, that that's, I guess, but you do a lot of stuff in the movies that you just, just like how if I say something and it ends up, you know, striking a nerve, I just say, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's how they, that's how they probably do I've it. been defending a lot of movies I made, uh, Kat, back I know, in the I 90s. Know. <laughs> right. Yeah. But even you didn't fire yeah. your stunt coordinator. No, I didn't. I but just, those stunts were really crazy. Yes. I, it, <laughs> I landed on that horse every time. It's just one of those things where people talk, you know, about work environment, hostile work environment. They'll, you know, say this hostile work. Look, I don't think a work environment is more hostile than one where there's, as you mentioned, repeated warnings of we're having all these accidents with lethal weapons. Can we maybe fix this? And they're just <laughs> rushing. Like, like, what could be more important than that? Yeah. I would think nothing. So it's obviously a really, really, really sad situation. And um, it's one of those lessons where like, oh, we can learn from something from this. But it's also disheartening to know this is something that needs to be learned. Learned, exactly. No, nope, they could have, again, if they, if they would welcome wisdom from the people they hate. Right. That's the whole, that's the lesson here. And I'm always trying to teach lessons. Because mm. <laughs> I'm the hero.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.